So welcome everybody to another episode of the Square Groot. I'm Sam. This is James. And we are joined by Mr. Drew Abercrombie. Yay. Hello everyone. <laughs> How are you doing? We're pretty good. Good. Pretty good. Yep. Quite hot in this small room. It is quite yes. warm in here, yeah. We, in we have managed to lure you into a very small confinement. It's the a man- delight. Manager's here. office at the top of Waterstones. Indeed. <laughs> it took no luring. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get in here with you. Yeah, your thousands of fans downstairs in the shop will be wearing... Where is he? And you're upstairs here with us. It's true, you lucky people. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, though. I mean, this is uh, quite a privilege and an honour. Thank you very much for giving us some time out of your busy schedule. Oh, no. No, yeah. no, I'm happy to be here. Which sounds like a really busy schedule. Because we're looking at the tour in, I think, yeah, in York at 7 o'clock tonight. And you've been in Scotland and you're going it's non-stop. Yeah. yeah, you tend to do two events a day. So you'll do a... A daytime signing, and then uh, you'll head on somewhere for the evening and do a bit of a talk and a bit of a reading and a bit of a Q and A yeah. mm. and sign some books there as well. So you kind of work your way down from Scotland all the way down to London, or perhaps from London all the way up to yeah, Scotland, right. depending. Yeah. Do you get a bit of a chance to do some sightseeing, get some food? You know, you're in a massive I, I, shopping I do, centre. You I do eat things. Yeah, on the way. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I get this very hungry <laughs> if I didn't eat anything during S- the week. Stop off in Gisborough on the way down to York and get a Parmo. Gisborough, yeah, the uh, Parmo. Yes, if you want to, t- if you want to taste the uh, the northeast, the authentic, the <laughs> yeah. authentic taste of the northeast. You want to get a look into that Parmo, <laughs> cheese yeah. and chicken, basically in vegetable sauce. It sounds all right, actually. I might have to do that. Fair enough. Um, so, where are you after York then? After York, we are in another town. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, I think, I think Leeds, maybe Fair Leeds enough. daytime tomorrow, and then. It's a um, an amazing homecoming gig at Preston. Aye, fair yeah, enough. I come from Lancaster, so it's not quite a homecoming. Okay. But it's as close as I'm likely to get. Yeah. So yeah, Preston tomorrow evening, mm. and then we kind of start going south. And I think we're in Nottingham, we're in Colchester, and then we're in London on Thursday night. Wow, quite busy. Yeah, yeah, pretty busy. Is it exhausting? It's. It can be kind of slightly wearing, but it's no, it tends to be fine. Okay. You know, you kind of get a bit of a, a bit of adrenaline for an event, mm-hmm. for a reading. Usually, I mean, it's always a bit dispiriting if uh, people haven't turned up. Yeah, that's really the, oh, yeah. you're in an the an downside. In, well, you're in an office in Waterstones with two random, three random people. <laughs> oh, that's the high point. You look forward to that. That's gold dust. Yeah, we, you we, can't buy it. We were kind of hoping no one would show up. To be honest, you know, yeah. Today, sorry, but like for us, that's great. <laughs> You get but, more time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but, uh, but there was loads of people there, so I thought. Yeah. So we were quite thankful that you managed to like um, do a little bit extra for. No, uh, no, yeah. of course. I mean, it's always good uh, if people turn up. I did uh, a lecture once in Holland um, to two people. Wow. And it was uh, also <laughs> to make it more impressive. The room was gigantic. <laughs> it was a gigantic room with two people in it. When I got there. Tickets. There were, there were about 200 yeah. people in there for a, a short story competition they were doing. And then I was thinking, bloody hell, this is a lot more than I was expecting. Yeah. I was quite nervous. And as the competition ended, they started to drift out one by one. <laughs> and it ended up with two people. Who was this Joe Abercrombie? Well, yeah, it was, my first book was just being published there. So almost by definition, no one knew what I was. Mm. The two people had driven all the way from Germany to be there, so that was quite nice. Oh, bless them. Yeah. Fantastic. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. So, um, like... Does the writing get put on hold when you're on your tour, or are you still thinking like ideas, quick like jotting them down, or, or yeah. do you like to like have a big gap and then get back into the? It depends topic? a bit where I'm at with the book. I mean, if I so this latest book, I was just finishing this when I was in I was in Australia in February, and uh, nice. the second holiday book, so Ho- on holiday or just uh, no 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 we're uh, touring, and, stuff. Oh, touring right. and doing events and things. Uh, uh, but the second book had gone down really well with my editors so it was very easy edit very smooth mm, third, I was expecting the same with the third and actually they had quite a lot to say about the third oh, cheeky ah. bastards <laughs> uh, so I had quite a lot of work to do in Australia and I spent the whole time really in hotel rooms working on my book mm. so if there's work that has to be done then it has to be done generally I find it uh, kind of difficult to work on the road I mean it's a bit distracting but yeah. sometimes you get mm. a bit done so I did a few hundred words on the car journey down from Glasgow just now do you have to have a specific like when you're at home do you only have to have peace and quiet or do you just I've got three kids so that's not an option fair enough (laughs) no it's war zone constantly war zone so so like 
Do you not have a, like a writing room, or is are you tapping while someone's watching the television? Oh no, I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a room, yeah, um, but it is still part of the house, yeah. and so <laughs> the kids will invade quite frequently. Why don't you do a roll down and just get a shed? Oh no, no, you had like a little yeah. gypsy caravan. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that whole shed thing, really. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not a believer. Okay. I like to be close to my tea making facilities and the uh, toilet, obviously, <laughs> and of course the PlayStation because I've got to fit in. I mean, when I say it's difficult. What I mean to say is it's difficult to work once I've finished the six hours of PlayStation for the day. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. I was going to ask you if you're a PlayStation or Xbox man. I'm a PlayStation man, yeah. Yes. Okay. Xbox is dog shit, and people who play <laughs> on Xbox are lame saddos. Yeah. And yeah, it is yeah, really the yeah, dividing the line between people who are amazing and brilliant and people who are rubbish. I got some sad news my PS3 broke yesterday. It just... Why have you got a PS3 still? Because I don't have enough money to buy a PS4. Because holding off until See, that Star Wars Battlefront comes that out. That truly is so. bad news. Yeah. No, I've always been a bit surprised by the how you know into it people get. I have a PlayStation because I had a PlayStation a thousand years ago when they first appeared. Mm. I, I played Soul still. Blade and oh. Resident Evil on it. Good times. So what's your top three games then? What, full time? Yeah, because I know you're a gamer because I've done the research. So. Twin Kingdom <laughs> Valley, Elite... And Dungeon Master. I haven't heard of those first. No, they all came out before you were born. <laughs> yeah, probably. I expect. How There's nothing like the games you played when you were when you were little, you know. And so those are all yeah. the games on the BBC well, we're, Model B. We're playing Golden Axe, like all the Sega Golden games, Axe. and um, Star yeah. Wars Jedi Power Battles. We're trying to do. But yeah, they're, but they're harder older games. Do you find that like now it's too easy? Well, I mean, I like Dark Souls for that reason. Right. You know that it's quite brutal and unforgiving, and it is. you feel a yeah. sense of achievement when you. you What's know, your opinion of Skyrim? Or something. I like Skyrim. I mean, it's kind of bland. Okay. It's a bit like uh, chewing through a lot of <laughs> a lot of bland burgers. I find the world a bit. I think Skyrim's a lot better than the previous editions have been because it has that Vikingy texture. Mm. Yeah. But uh, generally, I find the Elder Scrolls a little. It's great, and the world's huge, and it, it's kind of very involving, but it has this slightly generic quality and comparing that to something like The Witcher which for me had a much more okay. interesting world and kind of background possibly because it's based on a you know a written creation yeah. a bit more of a coherent creation you feel like the Elder Scrolls was just bung together for the purpose of making a game mm. and so I love Skyrim I think it's great but uh, I like something with a bit more texture to it if possible well, do, you, yeah. do you play World of Warcraft or have you ever played it? no no, because no, I know that that'd be it. Then. <laughs> yeah, you no more books. Invest your I've life always sensed that, that uh, if, I, if I got started on World of Warcraft, that'd be it. No, oh, I'll spend as much yeah. time as there is time to spend. Yeah. on a game, and you know there is no end, is mm. there, in World of Warcraft? So no, it's practically infinite, isn't it? It is. It is, and you know, there was a time when I was twenty, I put in many thousands of hours into playing Street Fighter Two, for example. Oh. I could, if it had been World of Warcraft then. Yeah. If I was ten years younger. I expect I'd have sunk hundreds of hours into it, but that, uh, that's the really annoying. Old. That's the really annoying thing if you think how many hours you've done playing games and stuff. I mean, I remember one time playing Metal Gear Solid Two, started at six o'clock in the evening, finished at half past twelve at night. Yeah. My mum's like, "Someone should really go to bed now. It's school the next day." I'm like, "Ah, but it's Metal Gear Solid Two. Only imagine all you could have achieved. I know. We won't yeah. be standing here now, but uh, I look at the completed games on my shelf sometimes and think, you know, those could all be completed books. But they're not. <laughs> they're just happy memories. Do they in, have they ever inspired you to ever write a character or a or a scene or anything? Oh yeah, well, I, they're certainly you know anything you watch or play or read and and you know experience in life and really enjoy or don't enjoy. I think finds its way into your writing. Mm. So uh, I played an awful lot of Total War mm -hmm. in my time, and uh, I think that has found its way into you know books like the Heroes and. Oh, that's my favourite book. Yeah, it's a fantastic book, isn't it? It's fun. Such uh, a good book. The premise got me because it was like three days of battle, and how can you make a book out of three days? But you did. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's nice in that um, you don't see a lot of fantasy that takes place in that kind of focused no. time frame and in that no. focused location. So it was an interesting challenge. Because like other ones, like like Lord of the Rings or even like Legend by David Gemmell, like it's spun over a couple of weeks you know the siege lasts for ages and it's yeah. like week three and week four whereas this one's like really sort of like brutal and three days compressed together yeah it's my, my favourite um, part of that book is when um, it's where Barrow Dan, Dan Gost goes across the uh, water first of all and he's like just hacking people down and he comes across 
uh, Galma Golden. And then yeah. a little bit later on, it's like, Galma Golden's been punched in the face several times. It's like, ah, I just like that little interconnectivity bit. You get a lot of crossing over when you yeah. press a lot of people into that kind of small yeah. space. So I was, yeah, trying to do that. Really. And that's when you introduce cannons. Yeah. Is that where it's going? Because in Red Country, you've done cannons and gunpowder. Yeah. How far are you taking the technology in that first law universe? Well, I don't know. I haven't just totally decided, but I like a world that is, you know, developing mm. and changing. I think sometimes fantasy worlds can be these medieval sandboxes where everything's been the same for a thousand years, mm. you know. Yeah. And I like to feel that there's some economics and there's some technology that's changing, there's some industry developing. Mm. In our world, you know, wars are the result of progress and change and social shifts and so mm. on. So I like to feel like it's a, a world full of you know those forces so mm. there'll definitely be some there's already been some kind of very early limited industrialization yeah. i quite i'm quite interested in that the whole uh, the coming of rail and the coming of steam power and so there may be a little exactly touch because sorry james let me do some talking oh yeah. Yeah. well obviously you but yeah um, i got some questions too no like uh, <laughs> the fantasy genre yeah sorry <laughs> Like, it's, there's a movement. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go on. Is it's it? in law, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's And the one. common denominator. Yeah. That's brother, my sister. Husband. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'll edit that out. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for <laughs> speaking. You're breaking the fourth wall. Sorry. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay. But in fantasy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> recently, <laughs> there's, there's definitely a movement at the minute which uh, you're at the forefront of. If I, if I Google oh, the Vanguard, no doubt, yeah. The top fantasy uh, books which I have, that I do quite often, you're like in the top five or top ten. Like there's, you know, there's Martin Sanderson, Ruffer, Ruffus, Ruffus, yourself. Like you're up there. So to see you, you want to take it like a technology direction. This kind of fantasy's moving with a freedom it never has before. Which um, you can, Brandon Sanderson's gonna like do stuff like that, but like it's, it's very interesting to see where where we're going with this fantasy thing. And you're you're a vanguard in it, so so it's a scary ride. So like um, it's it's interesting times. I mean, I think uh, uh, fantasy was quite you know stuck in in a bit of a rut for mm. a while. It felt like you know yeah. obviously Tolkien was a, such a big influence, and it felt like. Writers were very much in his shadow for quite a long time. Yeah, commercial play, fantasy play was a much. well, you know, was certainly repetitive, a bit like westerns were, you know, in the thirties and forties yeah. and fifties, maybe. Mm. Uh, a lot of white hats and black hats, a lot of mm. focus on world over character, maybe. Uh, a lot of quite solemn tone, mm. yoldy dialogue and style of writing, and it feels like you know Martin, in a way. Started, kicked off a, new, a slightly new era with uh, much more shocking, unpredictable plotting and much more focus on the characters yeah. and maybe a more modern style of expression. I think that stuff had always been there, but it had become much more fringe, you know, over yeah. the past, yeah. in the 80s and 90s. So, Because there's a, a few authors who wrote that way who are kind of coming back into the, the spotlight a little bit. Because uh -huh. they've, they've done it, but they, it wasn't the in thing at the time. Yeah. Now it is, and we're kind of, um, yeah... So I always found it a little bit when you read fantasy, if you're not a magician or a shaman, well, you're snooping, aren't you? It's like you have the powerful wizard, you've won. Whereas now the introduction of technology, cannons can kill people from hundreds of feet away. When you first tested the cannon and it hits Black Dowell's encampment, it's like, what the heck was that? Whereas that is a different dynamic altogether, so it's not necessarily going to be magic all the time that wins the day. It's going to be magic versus science almost. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite a low magic sort of guy. I'm not that not that interested in magic. I like mm. I like it to be there, but I think uh, you don't want it to be an easy way of solving problems. Mm. You yeah. want uh, it to feel like a human world with human mm. challenges and human solutions, generally. Definitely. When yeah. you write a character, this is something I've... When I first started reading your book, do you deliberately go out to twist like a stock character like you think of Baez he's not your typical uh, wizard or magician was that something you deliberately did thinking alright I'm going to just introvert a little bit switch it up or was that something you just came back when you were writing let's say that yes it was all a brilliant long term plan <laughs> I think that is probably the best way of putting it I think it's hard when you're that far away from something mm. I started writing those books 12 years ago maybe mm. now and so it's hard at that distance to kind of separate what actually happened from what people say happened yeah 
and people will say, oh, this is a brilliant inversion of this trope or whatever. Yeah. You start thinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really isn't cool. it? I'm great. I'm really clever. I mean, at the time, a lot of it was just what I felt like writing. Mm. But certainly, I've read a lot of fantasy, and I, I loved a lot of things about fantasy. But at the same time, I was frustrated with a lot of other things. Mm. And so I suppose the first law was really just my take on epic fantasy. You know, my, my attempt to write something that had some of those virtues of epic fantasy, but at the same time had a bit more shock value. Oh, yeah. And more definitely. of a kind of fast-paced, modern feel to it. Mm. You know. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. You are a genius, sir. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, yes, I try. I try. Yes, you are. So what's after the Shattered Sea, then? What books are you going to do next? Or can you say well, uh, yeah, there's a collection of short stories, certainly. That's nearly finished. Um, so there's various stories that I've written with, uh, well, for collections of one kind or another mm-hmm. with other writers or for some special editions of the books now and again. Uh, a lot of them have been quite hard to kind of find and they haven't really appeared that widely. So there's 12 or 13 of those, a couple of totally new stories as well. Cool. And we're putting those all into a collection um, that will come out hopefully in April. Excellent. Um, and after that, it looks like probably uh, another three books set in the adult world. Mm-hmm. It's still a little up in the air, I must say. Not totally settled in my mind yet. Yeah. What I'll Is that going to be First Law or a completely new universe? Is that with Golans? That'll again? be with Golans, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, and the stories will be with Golans as well, yeah. So the idea is to kind of continue with adult stuff mm-hmm. with Golans and then, you know, uh, hopefully do some slightly younger adult, more focused stuff with Voyager as I mm-hmm. go along and play the two off evilly against each other. Uh, did you find it difficult or find it interesting writing a young adult because it's a different sh- like tonal shift did you enjoy writing that type of uh, book yeah well I certainly enjoyed writing I think you know shorter tighter books that was really the aim with these um, they were aimed in part at younger readers but I didn't want them to you know feel juvenile I wanted mm. them to feel like they would work for adults too I think you know young adults want adult books yeah. um, they want, don't want to be talked down to they want stuff that tackles proper issues of mm. sex and violence and money and the things they're facing in their daily life so you know mm. I didn't like juvenile books when I was younger mm. I was trying to write the kind of book I liked at 15 or 16 which is substantially the same mm-hmm. but maybe that little bit faster I suppose it was on my mind as well as a maybe a wider adult audience out there these mm. days who are interested in fantasy but a bit turned off by some of the huge size of what's out there Yeah. so yeah. the idea was something shorter, tighter and faster Fair enough, yeah, it'd be yeah. pretty good. Mm. With Vikings? Vikings, of course. Yep. Yeah. You're a huge fan of Vikings. And you yeah. Read a lot of Viking books. I, heard I, I the like podcast. them, yes. They, uh, they are very interesting, yeah. I find. And violent, which yeah. is good, but you know, also great explorers and, and culturally quite fascinating. Mm. The very distinct culture and way of going on. So, yeah, I've always been interested in Vikings, so it's good to try something with them a bit more of a a dark age perspective something pre-medieval mm. was uh, an interesting change of pace you should enjoy would, you, would you like to be a Viking yourself I'm just saying <laughs> well I'm a bit too attached to you know soft toilet paper running water and things yeah. of that kind so I, think, I don't think that would work for me ok you know right. maybe well, leading a raid against the, the coast of Yorkshire would be handy you know no destroying a monastery or two <laughs> Don't come Raiding down the rivers of France? Oh, yeah, France, yeah. France, France ok. Fine. Not York. Fine. Sam was, Sam was going to say, yeah. You should enjoy York. York. Have yeah. To, yeah, have you been to the Yorvik Centre? I haven't been to the Yorvik Centre. I've been to York Waterstones before. Okay. That's probably as close as I've Where are you going to, to next? It is York, yeah, yeah. So this sh- evening. You should enjoy that, because uh, uh, that's well, obviously for all Vikings and Yorvik mm-hmm. and all that. So, so if yeah. you're feeling a bit Viking-y when you get there, don't be afraid to act a bit, you know, yeah. beat some people up, because that's what you do there. Get the old they used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I got given a plastic sword at last night's event, so maybe I can... Oh, nice. Run through the town screaming and waving that above my head. Fair enough. Last time we went to York, uh, there was like a little sort of like um, presentation thing about uh, put some chainmail on some helmets and swords right. and stuff. And it was like, yeah, okay, well, let's go for that. There was like all the little kids about me and James standing mm. with the swords and shit. That, that could be a good um, creative writing thing if you're a bit stuck. Yeah. If you buy some armor and vest and just put it on, just have a walk around. Get into it, character. Get, get in it, yeah, it feel cool. might be quite hot and, and weighty. I'm not sure how helpful it would be, be in a way to yeah. liberating the muse but not, yeah maybe quite difficult trying. to type with what not um, the kids would be like that's what's going on it's a good point mm. yeah maybe I okay, won't maybe don't do that yeah. no, that's a silly yeah. idea well, I'll go for it one more uh, I, I want to ask you this with like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings and Hobbit have you ever thought oh well, I wouldn't mind my books being on the silver screen or big screen no, the idea had never occurred to me, and you know, if anyone ever suggested such a thing, I, I wouldn't be up for that. Aww. I don't want that Hollywood money. 
I don't want the fame and glory suggested, you know, by a yep. big Hollywood adaptation. I don't want to be known throughout the world and my books celebrated and read mm. widely wherever I go. You're such a humble man. I know. Yeah, you. I've <laughs> never met a writer ever in my life who wouldn't want mm. a really good adaptation. I mean, it's very hard to control what sort of an adaptation you end up with. Mm. You can only really sell the rights to someone who you have some faith in and hope that things will come good but it's always a very long and complicated road with yeah. many many delays because you probably you know because like like Lord of the Rings obviously Tolkien's dead but Peter Jackson <laughs> adapted lots of different things for the Hobbit and stuff and then mm-hmm. you've got George R. R. Martin in the Game of Thrones going completely the different way now in the TV series so I guess you have to be yeah, involved you, to some degree but they you might not be creative control a little wouldn't you yeah. I think you've just got to be aware that you know it's a different medium and there's mm. different requirements and that probably to jam your square peg of a story into the round hole mm. of television or film, especially film because it's that much shorter, yeah. is going to mean a lot of changes. And you've just got to accept, even if you are very closely involved with something, even if you're a key writer on a TV project, you're still one of a big group yeah. of yeah, people definitely. and there's obviously someone putting a lot of money in somewhere mm. and they're going to want things a certain way. So. Mm. You're not going to get things your way the mm. same way you do as a writer of books. Mm. Yeah, you just got to either sell it and give it away and not be involved, or you've got to accept it's you're going to be them. one one cog in a big machine. Yeah, that's very true. Well, I'd, personally, I'd like to see it on the big screen. So I, would I. Yeah, I think it would have be awesome. Have you got um, 100 million pounds on you? Uh, no, I, okay. have, I have a broken piece. Some chewing gum. Oh, uh, yeah, some big red at home, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Yeah. Well, never I think mind. that's pretty much everything it's yep. been a pleasure thank yeah. you very much no doubt we're going to think yeah. of more questions later on thinking why did I ask him that but yeah yeah. we've been in yeah. here long enough I now. think well, it's quite warm I think I've lost 20 yeah. pounds in weight now yeah but it is quite warm thank you very much it's been a pleasure yeah. thanks guys for taking time out your busy thanks. schedule thank to you do to it. you also it's alright I can shake hands with the fourth wall I'm the writer I have that I can get a bit meta yeah well why not so thank you pleasure thanks very much thanks guys off to York